What's up, y'all? I'm Cam Best. This Galactus deck just top forward a snap battle arena, and I have an interview with Revis, who piloted the list to that result. One thing you'll notice about this list is it is not your typical Galactus list. It's very different. There's a bunch of interesting card choices. We're going to break them all down with Revis, but I wanted to give you a brief overview real quick. The Jeff is in here just as like an early priority play that like counters Professor X. You can also play it through Electro. So if someone tries to arrow you, you can play Jeff second some of the time. Uh, it's very rare to do that with Galactus, but like, for example, after you Electro, you're, you're going to be playing like a Taskmaster on your Destroyer. You can prevent that Taskmaster being moved by playing Jeff. That's definitely a thing that'll come up. Generally speaking, he's just not that bad. Like, you play him early, and they Polaris him, and then you move him out of the lane, they Polaris him, and play Galactus. Like, there's a lot of cool stuff that can happen with Jeff. He's just good enough to be good. And it's a really cool innovation here. The rest of the list is very similar to lists that I've already shown you in the context of, you know, mix-ups. Uh, if you want a greater overview of that, well, we've got the interview coming up. So first off, shout out to Revis, and let's jump in to that interview. All right, so Revis, you just hit uh, top four in the most recent Snap Battle Arena with a Galactus list that is a little bit off the wall. A lot of people have not been playing Galactus in this manner. I, I will say, I will, you know, big up myself for this one. I'm one of like a few people who believed in this style of Galactus. I've been a believer in Shuri taskmaster galactus but i believe you came to it an entirely different way so how did you end up on shuri taskmaster galactus as your choice yeah so uh yesterday uh Brody actually recommended that i join uh this tourney and i wasn't really sure what to play because i hate playing mirror matches and like everything um so i went over um to watch lambie's stream from the, i think the night before um because i was curious what he was facing like the, he said he had lots of trouble versus galactus and it was this list uh but without daredevil instead of yondu um which was pretty similar to a list i've played before i've never played with taskmaster but oh my goodness this is so so much better and yeah nobody else i think brought galactus or at least no one i faced so i got to enjoy no mirror matches <laughs> I mean, that's 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 pretty damn good. I do think that watching you play this deck brought something to, you know, my attention at least, and I'd, I'd hope you'd be able to elaborate on it. How aggressively do you have to snap in most matchups? I make sure I snap by, like, turn three usually. Like, otherwise, you're not going to get any cubes. Um, I, yeah... It, it really depends on the matchup. So right now, there's not that much uh, Shang-Chi. So I was like snapping as soon as I had Shuri and or Taskmaster in my hand a lot of games. And, so those would be your triggers? Yeah. Uh, what if about... they had no Shang-Chi. Okay, so if they had no Shang-Chi, you're looking for, I have Shuri, I can do the Shuri Taskmaster thing. If, they do, if you think they do have Shang-Chi, you're looking for like Electro Galactus because there's not a lot of counterplay to that running around right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then the other thing too is a lot of the top decks, they if they don't do anything by like turns one or two, like by turn two, I, I'm kind of aggressive. I'll just snap that because uh, a lot of them have like, if they don't get their early game, early Zabu or whatever, they feel really weak. So I feel like I, could, I took advantage of that a lot. So given the importance of early snapping, what's like, what would you say is the worst hand you would reasonably early snap? The worst hand I would early snap. Um, probably any time that I had Daredevil in my hand. Um, it felt super weak versus all the Polaris running around. But I would still... I, I don't know. I don't think there was a hand where I wouldn't snap depending on the locations. I think like the big thing is I, had, I couldn't usually snap before turn 2 or sometimes even 3. Because I need at least multiple locations to play, like, threaten the Galactus, right? Galactus is here mostly as a threat, as, like, if you don't do something in that lane, like, to prevent me to Galactus, you're going to lose the game right there. Yeah, I guess my question, another follow-up there would be, you played seven matches and then the top eight, right? So it's a total of nine matches on the day. Do you think you played Galactus, the Galactus plan more, or the other plans? Uh, I think... In overall, I think I only got Galactus off like a couple times. 
uh in the in the swiss rounds and then i got i got it off more in uh like probably the same amount of times i got it off in the top eight like throughout gotcha. the whole tournament most of the time it was just destroyer or octopus octopus won me a lot of games um we're going to go through a couple of the specific chart card choices there. So I do want to table the Doc Ock thing for that, because I am going to I am going to ask you about Doc Ock, because I know you're a Doc Ock guy. But I, I, I wanted to ask, I think more specifically, how much of this is a consequence of this deck being relatively unattacked by the metagame right now? By which I mean, you know, Polaris, Debris all-time lows right polaris is like kind of the only card that can really mess you up that you get so that you see reasonably not a lot of decks are running cosmo anymore not a lot of decks are running arrow anymore and not a lot of decks are running well i guess a lot of decks are running shang chi but now there's like competition at that spot such that some versions will you know like say death wave will cut shang chi for enchantress so there's less things that ruin your game plan in the me in the meta right now so how much would you say that impacted your choice to take this list no, that definitely impacted my choice. Um, to, I, I just, I'm just remembering to my first game, I played an opponent with Debris, Goblin, and Viper. So I honestly think the biggest thing in the meta is that uh, there's less Shang-Chi. Like, I won a lot of games. I'm surprised if Shuri uh, deck didn't win, actually, just from doing like Shuri uh, Destroyer Taskmaster. Um, and because you can play Jeff through Electro, I think a lot of people didn't realize that um, I countered arrow a lot of times with that. Yeah, because you. So is well, I guess it's as good a time as any because I, I we have a bunch of like specific card choices that I wanted to ask you about, and Jeff would be where I'd want to start. So please tell me about Jeff and what his role in here is. Yeah, so uh, Jeff originally I was thinking would be here to counter Professor X, um, but another reason that I really liked him was because of all the Polaris, right? So they can't like checkmate you as easily if they pull Polaris into a possible Galactus lane. Um, so you can just move the Jeff. Uh, it's it's kind of nice for, uh, for priority. It's it's similar to like how the list used to run uh, Lizard in the past or Ebony Maw. Um, I think Jeff is just like a lot nicer because you can also play it through Electro and into unknown locations uh, or unaccessible locations, right? So. It was just, yeah, I was surprised how often Jeff, like, won me games in this list. It was kind of crazy. So I was skeptical uh, at first. Yeah, I, I, I was skeptical looking at it, but talking about a card that I think you're skeptical of now, let's move on to the other two-cost card in the list, Daredevil. And I, you alluded earlier to the idea that Daredevil is just not really what you want to be doing because it gets Polaris a lot, and that's just, like, an awkward situation to be in. So tell me a little bit more about Daredevil. Yeah, so in my original list, I used Daredevil and Kang to basically just like play around my opponent's like uh, choices, right? To try and force them like to show me what they're doing or what they have, so that I can make easier snapping decisions. So I wanted to keep Daredevil originally for that reason, but it just turned into like, oh, my opponent's gonna pull it over into the Polaris lane, and all of a sudden there's like one lane I can Galactus in, and it was almost never like with open deck list which I didn't realize, realize before, like, it didn't really help that much. Like, I usually knew what my opponent was doing. They're going to Black Bolt or they're going to Wave. Like, <laughs> that was, like, <laughs> always the third five. Uh, so if you were playing this on ladder, do you think Daredevil has more validity? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I like Daredevil a lot. Because you don't know what your opponent's playing on ladder. Yeah. So let's say, let's move on to, I think, another card that people... I, this is the card, this is your card, right? So tell me about Doc Ock as the one remaining five cost mega disruption piece now that Leech ate that nerf. Yep, yeah. So Doc Ock is great. Like you get rid of all your counterplay, right? So you could go Electro, Doc Ock, Galactus Null, right? That's like the line that you should always be snapping if you have like th two or three of those pieces already in your hand. Mainly the Galactus, like they'll never stay to the null usually, so you don't have to have that in your hand. Um but one thing that was like huge too, right? Like I said, there's less Shang Chi, so just doing Shuri Doc Ock, all of a sudden your opponent has no cards, and like you can just Taskmaster another lane, and you're winning that lane. Um, so that was like, yeah, it, it's really nice to just like take out your opponent's card. I do think this is like almost a worrying card if it wasn't for like uh, the fact that you could lose the Doc Ock lane. Like it would be like a Leech uh, S card, yeah, for sure. 
Yeah, I mean, that is his downside. But yeah, like when you, I used to play Doc Ock in, like, before Shuri was the deck, back back when there were other things, I used to play Doc Ock in Shuri. I mean, ended up taking it out once Shuri became the deck because Shang-Chi was everywhere and your Doc Ock would just die every time you played him. Now, now that Shang-Chi is no longer everywhere, Doc Ock seems like a much more compelling unit to be playing. So one other card choice I wanted to ask you about no America Chavez. And I, I, I think I will preface this by saying it kind of makes sense to me because you're not just a Galactus deck. You aren't only trying to do one thing. You are trying to do multiple different things and you only really pull that trigger around turn four, or turn five in terms of which of the plans you're on. So you do end up doing a lot of pivoting. And so America Chavez does have a little bit less utility because you are going to be in a position where drawing a card on six is valuable and also in a position where you have a bunch of expensive cards. But I'm interested in knowing what if you, if you have anything you want to add to that. It's like, I get it, but I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. No, yeah, I mean, that's definitely right. I'm a huge Travis believer. I run it in, like, every deck. I run it in Sarah and, like, whatever, like, Kazoo decks, like, everything. It's really tough to run, right? Like you said, there's multiple win conditions. Um, and, like... All of them are six costs, so like you're almost never playing the Travis. Uh, and like, yeah, like you said, I'm not really trying to get off the Galactus every game. So I think it's very important to be able to just top deck something important, like your Death or your Null or your Destroyer in the last turn. Like, yeah. So one thing I saw that I was impressed with your play on was the Null. Uh, you you got a lot of just like really weirdly powerful Nulls off. What is your impression of that card coming out of playing a deck like this? Uh, it's a lot of fun. I like big numbers <laughs> uh, for like with the Galactus stuff. Um, I do kind of miss Shang-Chi in this deck because there used to be like play lines where you could like null for zero in a lane and Shang-Chi, like the old Shuri. But yeah. it, it's, it's a really good card um, in Galactus. Uh, not sure outside of that. And it does it does really well into like I faced like a like Venom, like Death Wave kind of gamer um early on. It, 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 if they're running destroy stuff, your null just gets big. If you get a helpful location, I snapped on Sinister London whenever I shot saw it pop off because you can just like destroy the London, Oc the London, like the destroyer, and your null just wins every lane. Like it's so it's crazy. Yeah, there was there well, well, there will be one of those games showing up in in uh the, the gameplay currently playing on the stream. I did want to ask, would you play this twelve on ladder, or is this sort of a, a a moment in time where Galactus can be played again, or like you know we've talked about the possible changes to the metagame that could make this deck significantly worse. More Shang Chi means your Shuri Destroyer plan is like significantly more vulnerable obviously that would be one thing to keep an eye out for if you're playing this list what other metagame shifts would make you think all right i don't want to do this anymore yeah if i started seeing more shang chi i would be a little bit worrying about showing this i think galactus is in a really solid spot though as far as like the decks go there's so much deck diversity where having a deck where you're only playing one lane some games or on ladder i get the galactus off like way more often and it's just like game winning. So yeah, I, I would play like the twelve on ladder. Yeah, probably. Would you make the Daredevil Kang change on ladder, or would you keep it as is? I, I think it's fine either way. Honestly, I I think I would make the change just so that I can get some value out of the six thousand token purchase, um, and because Polaris is so prevalent. Yeah, yeah, yeah I would make yeah. that change until the stature deck like becomes less popular. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. I guess, speaking of the stature deck, how, what do you think your matchup into the stature deck is, just reasonably? Not not you into the stature deck, but, like, generally two players of equal skill. One's got stature, one's got this. What do you... What's your what's your ballpark? Hmm, percentage-wise, I, th I think we're favored. I I'd say it's, like, 60-40. You, you just need to dodge uh like you have to be very careful with your wave if you wave and get black bolted or something like that you, you can yeah be in a rough spot. but you're almost out, always outpowering the list so you just need to dodge shang in that matchup um, so it's very so much, much just what because like that deck is gonna run shang and will continue to run shang for the near future they're never cutting that card i think might just be me but i feel like you're probably never cutting that card in that list any other lists that you're like, if, if 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 this list shows up, I no longer want to be playing a lot of Galactus. Like, how do you feel about Patriot, for example? 
Uh, Patriot can be scary. I, I don't know. That game versus the Clog deck, that, uh, uh, like, this deck did really well because of the Shuri stuff. I think Patriot, as long as they're not running, um, like, Leech and Shang-Chi, I think the combination of those two could be really rough. Um, yeah, I'm not too worried about Patriot. I am a little bit worried, like, if I were to run into something similar to Getrix Ladderless, where oh, it's, yeah. like, uh, the, Tropic, like, mono Storm, lockdown. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, that is very difficult to beat. Yeah, well, I, uh, I Gearx Ladder lists, that. and I think uh, Kawatek and Shade have been playing this like uh, Goose Storm list that just seems like an absolute nightmare for you. <laughs> like just that, yeah, just like a <laughs> that bunch of things that say you don't get to play cards here the entire game. That seems super, super, super questionable uh, in terms of matchups, right? So mm-hmm. I think. My overall conclusion watching this was a that you played really well in terms of like cube management uh, with the, you know, the arguable exception of this set where you went in super hard because like that's what you do with Galactus. But like I, I honestly thought you were like kind of favored just if you played a bunch of short games into the Death Wave matchup. But uh, I, I think that like it's one of those things where it's like. I feel like if you didn't play like that, you wouldn't have gotten here in the first place. So I actually was, like, very impressed with it, like, your commitment to it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I definitely ran, like, the same kind of play style throughout the tournament. So that definitely came to bite me in that matchup where it was, like, the first one where it was, like, super favored, but I could still lose. (laughs) So I I, I have to be more careful there. No, like that was just like, it was just really remarkable to watch because it was like, you know, yeah, it sort of looked like a misplay in the moment and it probably was, but only because he was, you were smart enough to be making the correct snaps the entire time, right? Like that's, that's what was so fascinating to me about that moment where it's like, it's, this is like the one situation in which you're actually going to be punished for playing Galactus because Galactus most often is not going to be super favored if it's just winning one cube all the time in battle mode unless you're in a really favored matchup like you are here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because like I lost that eight cuber and then every match like after that, I think I won like three or four in yes. a row. I wanted to snap those. Like on ladder, you can get those eight cubes back, but like on battle mode, you can't. You're just getting like one at a time. Yeah. So it was, just, it was really rough. It was it was super rough. It was super tough to see. I do want to shout out your opponent Danny, who piloted Death Wave better than I've seen anyone pilot Death Wave in a really long time. Like that was really good play from Danny. I I don't want to take anything away from him there. You got to take what you're given there, and he certainly did. So, in terms of the list going forward, if you had to say anything to someone who's never played Galactus before. If you had to give any piece of advice, what would it be to someone who's just never played Galactus and is like, this list looks cool and it's finally doing well in tournaments. I want to try it. Oh, that's interesting. Um, I think the biggest thing is just like play the deck a lot. Try and understand, like I say this about a lot of decks, but like you need to understand your opponent's like range of their deck, right? So as soon as you see on ladder, right, their first couple plays, for example, you should have an idea of like, oh, this list might have arrow or this, right? So the nice thing about this list is you have a lot of change-ups with, like, Destroyers and Nimrods and Galactus, so try and, like, always look for a line that will beat your opponent's best play. That's that's usually what I do. How much better is this list in open deck lists versus on ladder, if at all? Uh, I like this list in open deck list because there's a lot of things for your opponent to play around for sure. Like on ladder, you can get away with like the Spider-Man wave stuff with Chavez, but that's very linear. So I like having like the multiple win conditions. Your opponent never really knows what to do. If you get like a destroy location, you just nimrod it and you're just like so far ahead. It's it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So I guess I will bring up Spider-Man then because, you know, a lot of people play Galactus and Spider-Man. I've never been one of them, but I, I do feel like, you know, due diligence, why are we not spider man here? Uh, it's it's hard to fit. Like, it's it's a cube management thing, honestly. Like, Spider-Man's never winning you enough cubes in battle mode. A lot of times it's just going to feel awkward. Maybe there's some way you can squeeze it in over, like, the Daredevil or the Kang. Um, but I don't think it's worthwhile in battle mode to do that. Uh, but yeah, to be fair, the, the game that I did lose uh, in Swiss, I lost to my opponent having Spider-Man. 
Yeah. So maybe, maybe there's something to be said about it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is it is good against you, definitely. Like, we talked about, like, the, the power of the lockdown cards against Galactus. Galactus, you know, it's not, like, the most telegraphed with this list, but where you're going generally tends to be a little telegraphed. And if they can get that, get ahead on those, they uh, they will be able to get you out of the game. Definitely, definitely. So, is there anything else you'd like to impart to the audience here? Uh, this could include, you know, your socials, where to find you, who you are. You can tell them, tell them who you are, tell them what you do, plug yourself, take your time. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I'm a huge ladder grinder. Uh, I mainly stream uh, on Twitch, so at uh, Twitch TV slash Revis MS. Uh, recently switched out from Hearthstone. Uh, I also am on YouTube uh, very recently um, as Revis Marvel Snap, uh, same as Twitter. Um, yeah, we, I just like to have, you know, chill stream, have fun with a bunch of the top decks. Um, so definitely stop by if you're interested. Dope. And I do recommend that. Revis is a stellar player. Uh, highly, highly endorsed, just like I highly, highly endorse everyone else that I have on this series. Uh, do you want to do, you know, Shout out uh, Comantis and What Am I for helping sort of jumpstart what this is. And of course, thank you so much, Revis, for coming on because I really like these where I get to dive deep into a deck with someone who knows more than me about it. And I, I'm really grateful for that opportunity. So with that, uh, I would like to say thank you so much. Do you have any parting words for uh, the audience here? Yeah, I mean, I'll just give a quick shout out to Danny who beat me and won the tournament. Uh, his play was really good. Um, so yeah, def definitely uh, watch the VODs if you missed the the, the games. I, I thought they were uh, they were really good. That's super dope. Yeah, th th and yeah, thank you huge... so much for having me. Oh, dude, of course. And yeah, huge shout out to Danny, who I play on ladder sometimes, and I, I thought was a bot the first time I played him because he has the Wong avatar and his name is Danny, and he eight cubed me, and then I was like, ah, oh, that wasn't a bot. <laughs> Danny, <laughs> Danny's farming. Bro, Danny has next level strategies. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining us, Revis. Uh, I'll put your socials in the description so anyone who wants to check out Revis can go check out those socials in the description as well. As always, it's a pleasure to have you here, and thank you.